Hi, I'm Simon Nixon from SimonSeeks.com. I'm here to talk to you about my greatest inspiration, brought to you by Real Business and Orange. Simon Nixon was a school dropout. He turned his back on an accounting course at Nottingham University when he was 20, which gradually morphed into MoneySupermarket.com, the online price comparison website. Eight years later, Simon floated the business on the London Stock Exchange for 843 million. It is still the largest European internet float to date and made Simon a cool 102 million. He stepped down as chief executive of MoneySupermarket.com earlier this year and is now working on his new online venture, SimonSeeks.com, a travel guide website. Real business caught up with Simon in London. Simon, what inspired you to set up Money Supermarket first of all and when was the light bulb moment? Pre-Money Supermarket I had another business called Mortgage 2000 which was a mortgage sourcing system for mortgage brokers. So what we did, we um, helped mortgage brokers find the best mortgage from thousands of products out there in the marketplace. And I think um, free serve launching, um, free internet access in 1999 was probably the light bulb moment in that I could see that consumers were going to flock to the internet online, you know, that the barrier to going online was sort of removed. And I thought, wouldn't it be a great idea to take our broker facing product, put it online and make it consumer friendly and allow consumers to compare every mortgage in, in, in the marketplace and then diversify into lots of other money areas such as loans, credit cards, savings, etc, etc. Yeah, I knew pretty, pretty early on we were going to di diversify into lots of areas. I didn't at the time know we were going to diversify into travel and you know, utilities and sort of home services products. But um, yeah, I guess that was the light bulb moment. You know, FreeServe enabled us to, to, to seize the opportunity. From where do you get your entrepreneurial spirit? Do you, do you come from a family of entrepreneurs? Um, my uncle, my dad's brother, was um, an entrepreneur in that he, he owned two or three businesses. But my dad's got seven brothers and two sisters and no one else has really gone into business off their own bat. So, um, I, I, but I do believe that um, becoming an entrepreneur is, is, is genetic. It's, I don't think you can train, you know, put a hundred people in a class and train them to become entrepreneurs. It's something that you, you've just got in your, in, in your DNA. It's, you know, um, you just, you are slightly odd and different to other people. I think if you, you know, if you, if you get to know any entrepreneur, you'll find them quite odd. <laughs> um, who do you turn to for advice? Not many people, to be honest. Um, uh, some of the people I help found Money Supermarket with, I'll, I'll turn to advice on, on their specialist area. For example, Sean Twainy, who used to be our marketing director of Money Supermarket, he's also a very good business person. Um, I would go to him with, if, if I had a marketing issue or if I wanted to brainstorm a new idea, because he's always like quite negative. And if he likes it, it must be a pretty good idea. Um, uh, on the uh, sort of investment, corporate investment side, I would go to Rob Thompson, who works for me full time. And he, what he does, he manages my own personal money to make sure I get the, the best return on it. He's brilliant with numbers, very analytical. But from an entrepreneurial point of view, there's no, like a, no person that I, I go to, you know, there's no mentor. I, t I read books. I read books, not, not sort of management books and things like that, God. Uh, I read um, uh, autobiographies or biographies on successful people. That I find them really, I find that interesting, I learn, and um, I think it's also quite inspirational. Okay. Do you mentor other entrepreneurs? I, I haven't specifically mentored other entrepreneurs, but I've, I've gone to a lot of award ceremonies where I've been a judge and uh, you know, judged other entrepreneurs and given them feedback on um, you know, why they've won that award or why they didn't and how they could improve and so on, etc. So I've interacted in, in that way and I do a lot of uh, award ceremonies, but I haven't actually. Um, you know, took a couple of entrepreneurs under my wing and sort of, you know, had them follow me around for weeks on end or anything like that. Do you think that's useful? Would you have liked to have had a mentor that you could have followed around for a couple of weeks when you were first starting out? Uh, I don't know if, I think if you, I don't know whether you've asked this question to other entrepreneurs, but I would imagine most of them say they haven't really got a mentor. I don't know, I'm, I'm just guessing. Because I think as an entrepreneur, you just sort of, you're so uh, into doing what you, you want and you don't listen to other people anyway. You, you, you know, you, you have a vision for something and it's like you just want to get there and you, you just get there through brute force if, if you have to because you're just determined to make it happen. You generally don't uh, listen to other people because if you listen to the people then it makes you doubt yourself and then you don't know which way to go. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other businessmen or women in the UK or abroad that you, that you really Respect. admire? Um, I think the guys behind Innocent really, really interesting you know what they've done from a marketing point of view you know they come over as this 
you know, really fun company and it makes you want to buy into their product and their brand, you know, be part of it. That's very, very clever. I guess Terry Lee at Tesco, you know, he's done an amazing job over the last 10 years. Uh, you could admire him. Um, uh, Michael O'Leary, Ryanair, you know, he's got his own style that's very different and so on, but actually that generates probably, you know, tens of millions of pounds worth of uh, the equivalent advertising, you know, the PR he gets, the statements he comes out with, he always hits the headlines, you know. Uh, he's not completely mad, you know. He, it's, I think what what he does is very calculated, um, and you know, and it, and it gets him a lot of a lot of PR. And I think PR is really important for for, for a business. Uh, what's been the best idea or moment that you've had um, since you've started out in the business world and since you've become an entrepreneur? Uh, of course, SimonSeeks.com, the new <laughs> idea. Yeah, absolutely. Because the reason I wanted to come up with an idea that's got um, completely global appeal. That the one um, issue I had with Money Supermarket was that it's, it's harder to take it overseas because price comparison, moving it into other markets, you've got to research who the providers are to compare, you've got to do deals with them. They're not necessarily the same providers as in the UK. You've got a totally different audience there that have different cultural requirements. So, for example, in America, in Germany, for example, they're not into credit, they don't have credit cards or whatever. So, the markets are very, very different. It's almost, in a way, like starting from scratch. Whereas with SimonSeeks.com, um, basically if we can build up a massive database of really brilliant um, travel inspirational um, guides to all the, the, the sort of global destinations like New York, Paris, you know, Saint-Tropez uh, and so on, etc. That's got global appeal. So we can take what we've got with Simon Seeks and very quickly take it to America, for example. And um, Americans will be very interested in, in Simon Seeks from all the research we've done. And then what we do is uh, we encourage the American um, professional writers and travel enthusiasts to also add their guides to, to the site. But what we've got is we've got um, a whole lot of guides that, that, that basically are there are seeded and, and it gives it to business. Because to start in America with no guides is really, really difficult, as you can imagine. If you look at um, TripAdvisor, for example, uh, TripAdvisor are now in 42 countries and they've got 60 staff. It's a very scalable mm -hmm. offering, and Simon Seeks, although pretty different, in that regard, it's incredibly scalable. It can move into, into other countries very easily. And that's, for me, you know, really exciting, that you can move into lots of different countries with very few staff. Um, what are the three traits, um, or are there three traits that you can say make a successful entrepreneur? Um, uh, one, is, I guess, is lots of drive. Because you know you're going to need it um, because you're going to get otherwise you're just going to get tired and give up and uh, so drive and, and energy to just keep going on and on and on even when the um, it doesn't look good you know and everyone's saying it's not going to work you should just pack in and that happens all the time with every business um, you know I had it with Money Supermarket in the first two or three years you know so many people around me said you should just like call it quits or whatever you know you're still investing money it's going to fail it's going to fail everyone says that all the time. And you just have to, you have that single-minded, you know, belief that it's just going to, it's just going to work, and that that comes from your drive, I think. And you can't, you can't um, teach someone drive. It's just, it's in your DNA. That's what I mean with with an entrepreneur. You've got to. Uh, two, you've got to have, I think, a good idea, a really good idea. So you've got to be a, quite a creative person, and um, your idea has to be either unique or innovative. Or it has to have, uh, you might be going into a market that already exists, but it's got to, you've got to have some u unique selling points, in my opinion. You know, either your um, product is slightly better, or it's got, um, or, or your service is better, or your price is better. There's got to be something that's, that's unique about your, your proposition to make it successful. So you've got to, you've got to be quite creative. Um, and then I think the other, the other quality probably is you've got to, um, be good at hiring the right people and that is a skill you know and it's an intuitive thing I think you just know intuitively if someone is right for your business because you you know you've dealt with them through other businesses or whatever and you just intuitively know that they would slot in to the role that you're looking for whether it be marketing sales you know um, whatever and then it's the selling skills I guess to, to convince them to, to join and sell them on the vision of the business. Simon, thank you very much for coming in and talking to Real Business about your greatest inspiration. Okay, no problem. Thanks for having me.